Hello and welcome to this review of The Amazing, The Beautiful, The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells. Now, I bought this classic penguin, I think it was in my October book haul, and I bought it under the impression that I didn't have this novel. When I got it home, I realised that not only do I already have it, in Penguin even, but that I have re more recently reread it than I imagined. I couldn't remember reading it recently, but apparently I read it just a couple of years ago. That's what poor memory does to us. I think I prefer this edition. And I'm not quite sure when it was published. And the, in, the cover doesn't really reassure me on that one. But if you look at that artwork, it's absolutely beautiful. It's black and white pen or possibly lithograph. It's maybe not exactly how i'd imagined the martian and it's certainly not how i imagined the fighting machines my visualization is more based on the incredible music records that were produced i thought the artwork for those was spectacular and that's just how i think of martians as looking but it's a beautiful edition i'm happy to have it i'll probably pass this silly thing on to someone else i don't like that cover art much the cover art on this one is old enough that it doesn't tell you who did the art, but it, the, from the style of the art, it makes me think that it was probably actually done by a real person. And when was this one? 1972? It's in very good condition for 1972, but I suppose it's possible. Any case, um, I loved rereading it. What, should, what to say about it? Let's start with Herbert George himself. Herbert George, or H.G. Wells, uh, was an Englishman. He was born in 1866 and he died sadly in 1946. He was prolific in many genres. I think these days he's mostly remembered for his science fiction, but I think most of his science fiction, if I'm not mistaken, was written in his earlier years and as he wrote more and more he wrote more and more non-fiction. He wrote more than 50 novels in total, dozens of short story, and in his non-fiction area he included a lot of social commentary, politics, history, popular science. He actually had studied a fair amount of science, including under Huxley. Um, satire, biography, autobiography. He had a wide range of acquaintance and social circles, and they included social, social warriors? You wouldn't call them that then. And feminists and suffragettes, as they used to call women who wanted to be real people. And his writing style, did I mention, is beautiful? Of course I did. So he has been called the father of science fiction. Brian Aldous, who I admire, I admire his writing at least, referred to Wells as the Shakespeare of science fiction. And in another review, I saw him described as the Charles Dickens of science fiction. And I think the Charles Dickens comment is probably what resonates for me most in terms of the literary style. You either like Dickens style or you don't. And I think with Wells it's the same. If you admire the beauty of his writing for what it is, then you will enjoy his writing. But otherwise, if you don't like Dickens style of writing, you're not going to enjoy A Tale of Two Cities. If you don't actively enjoy Wells' writing style, you probably won't enjoy his books. His writing style is central to everything that he is, and while that can be thought of as true for most authors, he actually has something dubbed Wells' law after his writing style, because he rendered his works convincing by taking commonplace details, such as bread and cheese on table, and a lot of world building of the normal world, but just infusing it with one single extraordinary assumption per work. And in this case, of course, it's the fact that they are Martians and they invade Earth. Um, maybe we read a couple of examples from his style. What's, what's a beautiful example? Mm -hmm. oh, yes, I really like this one. So, at some stage, he, it's mostly first-person narrative by a writer living in the town of Woking. And as an Australian, the idea that there's a town called Woking is just marvellous. But there is. And H.G. Wells actually lived in Woking. 
um, after his marriage, after a marriage, something like that. And it was while living and walking that this was conceived. Apparently he was walking with his brother and they talked about the possibility of the change of environment if an invasion occurred near walking. All of this is first person narrative by the author except for a brief description of what occurred to his brother. So here, my brother immediately grasped the situation, shouted and hurried toward the struggle. One of the men desisted and turned towards him and my brother, realising from his antagonist's face that a fight was unavoidable and being an expert boxer, went into him forthwith and sent him down against the wheel of the chaise. It was no time for pugilistic chivalry and my brother laid him quiet with a kick and gripped the collar of the man who pulled at the slender lady's arm. <laughs> so you're either going to love this or you're not going to get it. And if you don't get it, there's probably not enough aliens for you to enjoy purely the alien element. And what else? So, War of the Worlds, one of his earliest science fiction novels. I am... I've read a number of things about it, but they contradict each other, and whenever I post anything about it, someone argues that I'm wrong. So, my understanding is that it's one of his earliest science fiction novels. It may have been written between 1895 and 1897. It was definitely originally serialised in a UK magazine, though I think there's an American magazine serialised it as well. And the full novel may, I believe, have been first published in hardcover in the UK in 1898. It's also considered to be one of the earliest novels which details a conflict between humankind and an extraterrestrial race. Now, around about the time it was published, there were quite a lot of novels about invasions being printed, both extraterrestrial and terrestrial. So, invasions literature from the same period, like I said, there was quite a bit of it. It's sometimes interpreted as commentary on the theories of evolution, imperialism, Victorian era fears of the outsider, etc, etc. One thing about this for Australians that I think is of interest is that Wells later noted, and I've read this on a couple of different sources, that inspiration for the plot, one of the inspirations for the plot was the catastrophic effect of European colonisation, which is, let's face it, UK colonisation, of the Aust Australian Aboriginals of Tasmania and some historians have argued that Wells wrote the book to encourage his readership to question the moral morality of imperialism and at the time of his this publication it was classified as a scientific romance like his time machine but since then, some people have argued it is speculative fiction rather than science fiction, and I totally disagree with that. So if you look into it, if you look into the science of the era in which it was written, you have got, aside from the beautiful writing style, if you start looking into the types of details that is included in his, his book, a lot of it is pure hard science, at least in terms of the day in which it was written. So you've got astronomy speculations about Mars and about other, other heavenly bodies, about the, fa the, phase, the phases at which the Martians fired at Earth was based on science, but it was still fictionary for the time. I'm not sure how, still, how that is still the test of time. The description of the machinery are detailed. The engineering detail is significant and it talks about machinery without wheels or ball joints. So that's very, you don't, re you have science fiction, you don't really have engineering fiction, but that's what he was doing. Uh, mass spectrometry, when you can, it's not called by name, but it's used to describe metals brought to the earth by the Martians, which weren't recognized here. And when you consider that mass spectrometry didn't really exist as a discipline until 1918, I, which is sometime after this was written, I think definitely science fiction. There's also many biological hypotheses and description. The very fact that he goes into the biology of the Martians, as well as their lack 
of resistance to disease so much definitely science fiction for me um i think yeah I, I still think it's the skillful writing and narrative that you're going to enjoy if you're going to enjoy this novel does anyone not know what the story is actually about i wonder i'm sure we all know it there have been at least two movies including that most recently hideous one that had what's his name the scientologist singing songs to a girl in the wreckage that was appalling and still the only movie i ever got my money back for by marching up to the front desk and saying that movie was so dreadful i want my money back they didn't give me my money back because the movie was dreadful but we managed to found another reason and they did indeed refund at the cost of the ticket as well as the movies, there's a radio play, the very, very famous Orson Welles radio play that apparently induced panic in America. It was conceived as a radio play. At the start of the play, it was made clear that it was a work of fiction, but they claimed that many people later um, tuned in after it had started and so did not hear that disclaimer. And it was so skillfully put together that they thought it was a real invasion and they panicked. The scale of the panic is likely to have been exaggerated by media and by it's evolved its own mythology. It's like the science fiction play that caused the panic of a nation. And it wasn't quite that bad, but it was pretty significant and very interesting. And I suggest that anyone who wants to laugh, read up on the story of the radio play that Orson Welles did. So the novel opens in the 1890s with an author living with his wife in walking. <laughs> That's never not going to be funny. Walking. Um, and it starts with normal. It's a normal life happening. So the... Have I already mentioned that Wells rendered his work, that works convincing by installing commonplace detail alongside a single extraordinary assumption per work which was dubbed, dubbed Wells law I think I did but if I didn't there you go so it starts off with everything normal and the author among other people notices including astronomer friends of his notices that there's flashes from Mars and no one really knows what they are until they start landing on earth and they're invade invaders from Mars our author is one of the first seen and he sees the Martians struggling against Earth's gravity as they emerge from their flying saucer. I don't think it's actually a flying saucer. I think it's a cylinder or something, but yeah. Um, the original one lands on Horsell Common near Woking. <laughs> and then they emerge and they start causing devastation and the author takes his wife delivers her elsewhere where he believes to be safe and it follows the whole evolution of the fighting machines the beginning of the heat ray which can level everything and utter devastation english whatever military they had at the time brings in artillery and stuff to try and combat it but they don't really have the resources and it's interesting reading this in 2023 and thinking back to 1890s because what they had in terms of artillery then was large heavy slow and by our sta standards very ineffective so if you think of the martians described by hg one good rpg could set all three of them on in ashes and finish the whole deal but 1890s artillery wasn't up to it and the whole English imperialism and assumption of superiority comes into play with the soldiers none of whom take it really seriously they do everything by format and the format doesn't work and so lots of people die it's interesting too to think of the narrative of food and supplies and water which in this day and age, all of us have got, have heard someone talk about their zombie action plan. We've all of us seen disaster and invasion type 
movies. We've all got the concept that was absent from the common fiction in the 1890s. And so this, this was groundbreaking. We're talking about people who don't even think to take a bottle of water with them as they're traveling through the devastation. We're talking about a place with very few basic supplies and where the whole notion of transport is alien to our notion of transport. They didn't have cars, they couldn't move fast, they relied on horses and trains and the trains were very easily demolished and horses died along with humans and didn't move that fast. So, okay, the first part is about is about the coming of the Martians. The second part is the earth under the Martians in book two, when the narrator is traveling with a quite crazy curate. Um, and they find out for the first time that the Martians are seizing humans and using them as prey. Now, the narrator and the curate are then um, in a building which another one of the spaceships crashes into. And so they have a bird's eye perspective of the whole, the whole machines emerging and being built and everything. It manages to do a great number of things <clears throat> very well. It ma manages to talk about the Martians from all different aspects. It's like the personal perspective, the social perspective, the individual experience. And like I said, it's all the narrator's personal experience, except for a brief time, which is his brother's personal experience. I've written on about this book for quite a while now. It's beautiful. It's beautifully written. I thoroughly recommend it. If you're going to listen to it in audiobook, make sure you've got a beautiful narrator. If Patrick Stewart has ever narrated The War of the Worlds, I think he would do a marvellous job of it, just like he did with Dickens. Um, what else to be said? What else to be said? Very happy to reread it. Actually, what did I say about it last time? Last time I burbled on extensively about what a brilliant what book it was. That was just three years ago and I've already forgotten. Um, beloved, lovely writing style. Novel set in historical time frame. That's a valid point that I made in 2020. As a novel set in a historical time frame, it has not dated very much. You don't have many women in it that'll bother some people um but historically speaking that's pretty accurate in the in the era when this is meant to have happened women would have been shuffled off to safety as soon as as soon as possible in terms of narrative it feels as if you're reading historic fiction because you are it was written historically but the beauty of the writing means that many of the things that would stand out to you as being outdated don't really stand out and moreover because hg was so very progressive in his thoughts most of the opinions aren't really going to grate on the modern reader in an unlike a book such as i don't know coral island or swiss family robinson um that the moral opinions of your protagonists and of the author are going to grate but I would say, on the whole, that um, Wells' Wells's view of the world stands out as being still quite beautiful. Right, yeah, I'm going to stop here because I'm definitely just burbling. Great book. Do read it. Look at that lovely artwork. Wow.